Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. People across the Commonwealth are honoring Vietnam veterans this weekend. Yesterday was Vietnam Veterans Memorial Day, but you still have the opportunity to honor the Kentuckians who made the ultimate sacrifice. Samantha Valentino shows us a traveling memorial is making a stop in Lexington. I was a door gunner in Vietnam, and we'd go out on medevac runs, bring in the dead and the wounded, and we would hold their hands, try to keep them talking, uh, to keep them alive. Jack Mattingly says they would ask him to tell their family that they loved them, but they would pass, and he'd never know who those family members were. I carried it with me for about 35, 40 years. I wouldn't wear a hat, talk about Vietnam or anything. That was until he visited the Memorial Wall in London, Kentucky. They say you touch it, they'll touch you back. That's what happened to me. I went down there and I broke. It was that moment that inspired Mattingly to do something to keep the promise he made to those he'd lost in Vietnam. He created the Traveling Kentucky Vietnam Wall. He takes it across the Commonwealth so every Kentuckian has a chance to see it. And the first thing I say when people come up to the wall is, the 1108 that's on this wall, the last thing they said, that they loved you. I consider it an honor to be able to do this. Alan Rice is an Army veteran and the chaplain of Rolling Thunder Chapter 5, Kentucky. They and the American Legion Post 8 invited the wall to Lexington in honor of Vietnam Veterans Memorial Day. There are a lot of guys out here that are veterans. A lot of them need help. As a member of Rolling Thunder, that's what we do is we do veteran assistance. Rice says having the wall here is an opportunity to reach veterans in need of assistance as well as educate people about the Vietnam War. We just had a father, well, a grandfather and his granddaughter come and visit the wall. He just wanted her to see it and understand that it does represent people that were from our country or from our state and that they did serve honorably. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. To find out when the Traveling Kentucky Vietnam Wall will be in your area or support Rolling Thunder's mission, you can head to this story in our WYMT News app. Governor Andy Bashir has issued an order for flags at all state buildings to be lowered to half staff from sunrise to sunset today. This tribute is in honor of Robert Willis Lindsay, a Pikeville firefighter who passed away in the line of duty. Funeral services will be held at noon at the JW Call Funeral Home Chapel. The governor encourages everyone to join in this solemn tribute. A man is dead after being found in the water at Yahoo Falls in the Kentucky area of the Big South Fork. The body was identified as 23-year-old Isaac Lee Turpin, from Somerset. His body was found yesterday by park visitors. He was pronounced dead at the scene and an investigation into his death is ongoing. A 63 year old man was killed in a warehouse collapse in Montgomery County Friday evening. The Montgomery County coroner has identified the victim as Alex Sloan of Bath County. Emergency management officials say it happened at an old tobacco warehouse off of Lee Road that was converted into a storage facility. The fire marshal says a crew was working under the floors of the warehouse in a crawl space like area. It's believed that the heavy materials caused the flooring to collapse on top of them. Definitely a warm Saturday across the Commonwealth. We have seen plenty of sunshine and some very mild temperatures for this time of year. We're right now still at 73 degrees in hazard under a partly to mostly sunny sky and not tracking any precipitation uh, for most of us, although we may have a little bit of a shower trying to go up there in the eastern part of Knott County. We will have to check the radar and inspect that a little more closely. Uh, but for right now, we are mainly dry. There are a few showers starting to fire off to our north and southern Ohio, and some of those may roll down into the mountains 
later this evening. Temperatures running mid to low 70s for most of us. Harlan, you're at 77, 75. Williamsburg, London and Somerset, 73. Jackson and Pikeville as we speak. And as we go throughout the next six hours, it should be mainly dry. A shower or two is possible in our northern counties, especially the closer we get to midnight. And that's going to lead to a few hit or miss thunderstorms for your Easter Sunday. Not looking like a washout by any stretch of the imagination, but a few storms are on the way. We'll take a look at future view to map those out here in a few minutes. All right, Shane, thank you. Easter weekend brought folks of all ages to Red River Valley Elementary School for an Easter egg hunt. Organized by the Hazel Green Volunteer Fire Department, Hazel Green Food Project, and the school's parent teacher organization, they gave out several prizes. Hazel Green Food Project President Nikki Stacy says it's good to help give back to the community. We combined all counties together, every kid is welcome, and we do a huge giveaway, and um, we, we do this giant egg hunt for every kid, doesn't matter where they are from or, or their age, if they have a disability or anything, we make, you know, accommodations to suit them. Stacy says this year, instead of asking for bicycles and other presents, they asked folks to donate to a little boy named Kate who needs surgery. We will have more on his story tonight at 11. A Corbin family wants your help expanding their efforts to help children and families in central Kentucky. Tracy Watson started the Just For Kids free group on Facebook. What started as a trade for what people didn't want turned into thousands of donations for children in need. They were able to help hundreds of kids for Christmas, provide cakes and presents for birthdays, and made sure kids had Easter baskets full of candy. Now they want help to provide on-the-go help. Posted everything unwanted I had in my house, which was my ideal to start the group, hoping every parent in Corbin would shop it and post back what they felt was fair. Then I would shop it to get my kids' stuff. They eventually want a home base and even advisors who can help them help more people. The city of Corbin is gearing up for a busy spring and summer season. Corbin Tourism and Convention Commissioner Director Maggie Munholland says while they have several activities for all ages from downtown restaurants and bars, outdoor fun and newly installed life-size chess pieces, adding they are kicking off their season next weekend with some events. Spring is here, and so, you know, we kick off the event season on April 6th with our Keep Corbin Clean litter pickup event, as well as our monthly Depot Street Market. Um, and then we are cruising hard and fast into Colonel Fest. Munholland says this year the city will host the Whitley County Farmers Market at their new hometown bank Farmers Market Pavilion. In Frankfurt, several, several high-profile bills were not passed by lawmakers before the end of the veto period. Senate Bill 6, called the DEI bill, would deal with preventing students or staff from in having to endorse divisive concepts on campus. And Senate Bill 147 would ensure that adult-oriented businesses, including drag performances, are away from places where children congregate. Lawmakers also advanced a new road fund that includes $5.2 billion in spending over three fiscal years. Included is a key widening of US-27 in Lincoln and Garrett counties, which is a part of a project that's been discussed for decades. Look at school traffic, all our school traffic, the traffic from Lincoln County, Somerset, everything travels 27 going north. So that will open that up and relieve a lot of pressure. The General Assembly will reconvene in two weeks on April 12th and must adjourn on Monday the 15th. You may be wondering what the veto period is. Once the General Assembly passes a bill, it goes to the governor's desk. He then has 10 days to make a decision on it. That's the veto period. He can sign it into law, let it become law without his signature, or veto it. If the governor vetoes it, lawmakers could override it with a majority vote. When lawmakers come back April 12th, they won't have enough time to pass a bill and override a veto. That's why they scramble to pass bills before the veto period started. 
A new nonprofit serving southern Kentucky's homeless population has hit a roadblock just before Easter weekend. The group helped the homeless thought it had found a bigger home for its operations at an old church near downtown Somerset. Jeremy Toms reports the deal wasn't quite done and now they have nowhere to go. Jessica Luster says her only sibling experienced homelessness and ended up dying of an overdose in Pulaski County, opening her eyes to the hardships people face throughout her region. And I saw there was a complete lack of resources uh, for people to get on their feet and get out of that situation. So Luster founded Help the Homeless in late 2022 to help meet those needs. When Jessica and uh, Help the Homeless found us, we were living in an abandoned building about froze to death, hungry. Luster says they offer food, clothing, and shuttles to shelters, but they wanted to expand. Uh, when we found this church property, it was a dream come true. She says they had made a verbal agreement to lease this church on Kentucky Highway 192. And this whole wall was all black mold. They'd worked hard on renovating it. Then the rug got pulled out. We were here working and the new owner stopped by to show the property. That new owner tells us the group had no written agreement with the old owner. He gave us his word. I, I don't know how something like this could happen when it was so public that we were moving here. Uh, the entire community knew. Feeling blindsided, Help the Homeless is without its own home. It needs help urgently. Astonishing, just uh, devastating, but uh, I'll never lose hope and, and something will happen, something good will happen. In Somerset, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Luster says they are especially concerned with new legislation that would criminalize homeless camping. She says there are no shelters in Pulaski County, so they are interested in any properties they can find at this point to help their residents have a place to be. Coming up, agriculture officials in Perry County took advantage of a community interest in beekeeping this weekend. And we're looking warm heading into the Easter holiday tomorrow, but could the heat lead to a few storms? We'll talk about that after the break.